In her advocacy regarding the expansion of human rights, Angelina Grimke chronicled, If a law commands me to sin, I will break it. If it calls me to suffer, I will let it take its course unresistingly. Encapsulating the heart of their lifelong battle for equality, the work of sisters Angelina and Sarah Grimke exemplified this ideology. The Grimke sisters reached prominence around the 1830s, a time denoted by the emergence of the abolitionist movement and the movement for women's rights. In the aftermath of the Second Great Awakening and the controversy surrounding the Missouri Compromise, perceptions of anti-slavery sentiment spread throughout the North. Refusing to be complacent, their work pushed the boundaries of what women were deemed capable of during this time period, which ushered in a wave of societal and ideological reform. Although Angelina and Sarah Grimke faced backlash due to their speeches and lectures that promoted both the abolition movement and women's rights movements, ultimately the efforts of both women successfully aided in the transformation of the American social sphere throughout the 1800s. The Grimke sisters grew up in a family residence in Charleston, South Carolina. Born into a family of slave owners, the sisters lived three miles away from the plantation on which their slaves lived and worked. Troubled by dehumanizing experiences regarding starvation and torture, the sisters felt an inner moral obligation to speak up and use their personal observations to lay bare the cruelties of slavery. Their position was critical. And here was a woman who the abolitionist movement could propel onto the public stage after that letter, certain of the impact she would have because she could declare, I have seen it. The Grimke sisters entered the abolitionism sphere after their work was published in the well-known abolitionist newspaper, The Liberator, and support for their cause grew. Equipped with their unique position as women who had previously owned slaves and had been part of the Quakers, the general public was more receptive to their criticisms because of their first-hand experience. Throughout the early 1800s, the Grimke sisters' authoritative speeches and publications cemented their position as pioneers in the political scene. Angelina Grimke herself declared her unwavering support for the cause. It is my deep, solemn, deliberate conviction that abolition is a cause worth dying for. Angelina met her husband, Theodore Dwight Weld, through their shared work in abolition. Their wedding invitations displayed an illustration of a slave in chains, a symbol of their active support for abolition. Both sisters actively enlisted their past experiences in order to appeal to their credibility, especially throughout their abolitionist writings. In American Slavery As It Is, a testimony of a thousand witnesses, Sarah recalled events throughout her upbringing regarding the cruelty that slaves sustained. Notably, she recalled, I feel impelled by a sacred sense of duty, by my obligations to my country, by sympathy for the bleeding victims of tyranny and lust, to give my testimony respecting the system of American slavery, to detail a few facts, most of which came under my personal observation. Her words showed that the sisters were unafraid of exposing active participants of slavery despite their societal influence. The Grimke sisters lectured to larger crowds during their tours in New England, Lydia Maria Child, fiction writer of Boston, published a powerful abolitionist essay telling of how she admired Angelina and her ability to humanize slaves. The Ladies New York City Anti-Slavery Society named them Our Sisters in the Anti-Slavery Cause. Their New England tours resulted in the active formation of abolition societies in West Amesbury, Holliston, Andover, West Newbury, and Brookline. Through the interweaving of their past with their present, the Grimke sisters spread the merits of the abolitionist cause. However, their controversial subject matter was inevitably met with contempt. As women in the public political sphere, Angelina and Sarah fought against the institutions and narratives that suppressed their advocacy and confined them into society's curated role of silence for women. The earliest source of backlash against their views came from the people that they spoke out against, South Carolinians. When Angelina's first letter to William Lloyd Garrison was published without her permission in The Liberator, Angelina's Quaker friends described it as the ravings of a fanatic and urged her to ask Garrison to withdraw the letter. Angelina refused to do so and believed her reputation to be forever ruined, but backed the validity of her words and refused to retract what she had said. As her career progressed, copies of Angelina's appeal to Christian women of the South were publicly burned by the Charleston Postmaster. The Charleston police told their mother that Angelina could never return. Sarah and Angelina's work isolated them and severed all pre-existing Southern ties. The press and the public criticized them, describing the sisters as old maids anxious to attract men, abnormal creatures, embittered spinsters, and cranks. 
They faced opposition when they tried to gather signatures in Fort Lee, and the Richmond Whig published several editorials that insulted them and called them fanatical. Their Pennsylvania Hall conventions were interrupted by Southern residents in the city who set fire to the Hall in 1838 during an act of outrage calling for action against the Reform Conferences. The Grimke sisters remained poised and refused to fall victim to the words of their rivals. They readily pushed the envelope of what was possible as the first Southern women to speak out for abolition in the early 1800s. This backlash motivated them, however, to fight for both causes simultaneously. Angelina Grimke notably remarked, what then can women do for the slave when she is herself under the feet of man and shamed into silence? In order for women to have the position to fight for slavery, both women's rights and abolition must coexist. Throughout their momentous life careers, the Grimke sisters heavily advocated for the political and social equality of genders. Growing up in the capital of slavery, the pair were often pushed to fit into demeaning societal standards of women. Sarah Grimke, a naturally gifted writer and scholar, longed to be a lawyer and even her father acknowledged her talent, but he still denied her the right to pursue higher education because of its taboo nature. The sisters feared bringing shame to their family and would not venture to the north until their Quaker conversion. In June 1841, the Grimke sisters addressed the Lynn Female Anti-Slavery Society, where they expected to lecture a female audience. However, their presence attracted people of all genders to attend their meetings, which resulted in a mixed gender audience by the second and third meetings. So when men start to come to her talks, their antenna go up. And when they tell her to stop talking to men, she says, no, I have a right. The sisters were also able to develop and inspire the new generation of empowered women who sought to battle societal norms and effectively participate in the abolitionist movement. Abby Kelly, a close ally of William Lloyd Garrison and one of the most influential abolitionist speakers, never would have begun her intellectual journey without the work of the Grimke sisters. After witnessing one of the Grimke speeches during their speaking tour, Kelly was inspired to voice her own opinions and lectures concerning slavery. The work of the Grimke sisters led to generational shifts in women's rights. Sarah Grimke was more outspoken about the question of women's rights in comparison to her sister. In her book, Letters on the Equality of the Sexes and the Condition of Women, Sarah Grimke detailed how she believed God created man and woman equally, and marriage was futile when the woman was born to serve the Lord and not a man. At a time where marriage was regarded as the most important duty of a woman, Sarah Grimke's unspeakable stances on marriage created a new reality for a woman that at the time was nearly impossible. The sisters caused societal change by confronting the inequality between women and men head on. A friend of Sarah Grimke and Angelina Grimke Welt, the profound abolitionist, William Lloyd Garrison at one point found the work of the sisters to be distasteful. In a letter dated July 29, 1837, Garrison privately wrote to the sisters condemning them for speaking to promiscuous assemblies and shifting the conversation from abolition to women's rights. He believed that by discussing women's rights at an abolitionist assembly, others would paint all anti-slavery advocates as women's rights supporters. Shortly after, Sarah Grimke responded to his message. They justified their actions by explaining that they never expected to lecture a male audience and they could only dream of speaking at such scales. Garrison realized his hypocrisy and quickly published all the letters exchanged between them to finalize his stance on women's rights. Another influential male figure in the lives of the sisters was Theodore Dwight Weld. Despite the fact that Weld was the mentor of the sisters and even married Angelina, he did not extend his full support in all of their endeavors. Though he did not outright condemn the sisters for their actions in women's rights, he argued in his letters that their deep involvement in women's rights convoluted their work in the abolitionist movement. He, like many other male abolitionists at the time, saw women's rights as a secondary issue in comparison to the anti-slavery movement. Though many prominent figures in their lives opposed their work in women's rights, the Grimke sisters prevailed and continued to contribute to the important cause. The American political sphere in regards to abolition and women's rights experienced a transformation due to the efforts of Angelina and Sarah Grimke. Despite being met with immense backlash due to their unique positions as the first Southern woman to speak out against slavery, their words paved the way for the intersection of the abolition and women's rights movements. Their work engendered a new wave of feminists and brought women's rights into national consciousness. With their strong presence in both abolitionist and women's rights movements, they received an abundance of backlash from fellow reformers. Even today, their legacies as pioneers of the women's rights movements and contributions to the emergence of the Civil War cement them in history. Mm -hmm.